Oh, yeah. Scare you all right. I want to get started because we have a lot planned for tonight. It's going to be an awesome meeting. Got a lot of uh, awards to get out. Uh, got some things to talk about about the, uh, the county fair. Uh, so with that, I'd like to start by welcoming any guests. Do we have any guests? Yes, Could you stand up real quick so we can recognize? Say hello, big, big Master Gardener, welcome. Awesome, awesome. We have any interns with us? Class 30, 39, correct? Yeah. You all stand up. Awesome, outstanding. Heard you guys are knocking it out. Appreciate it. And of course, all of our members. I won't ask you all to stand up, but we appreciate you all too. So. Um, Approve uh, proof previous uh, minutes. I think we need to update them real quick because there are a few things. So we'll be approving next month's or September and October's meetings in the November meeting. So please go out to VMS once we get them updated, look at them, and, and then we'll be approving those on uh, November meeting. So I want to jump right in. Well, I thought we were going to. Oh, okay. Welcome to our newest members. I guess I'm up next. So, oh, wait a minute. They're not here, are they? They're right here. Oh, wait a minute. Mary and Jamie Nielsen? Is that awesome? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Anybody taking a picture? Here, wait. Hold it, hold it up so they can get pictures. Get in it, Bo. Get in it, Bo. Take a picture. Oh, gosh. Let me get them on the camera. Oh, weeds. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Great job. <clears throat> Starfish Award. This is the best part. It's, this is the other side of collecting money, you know, this is the good part. <laughs> so we have a couple of Starfish Awards tonight, um, and I'm going to read a couple of these off for people that, you know, some people just don't like to get up in front, and I get it, and I think some people are afraid they're going to be in tears when they read this. So. so Mary Miller would like to recognize someone due to her work schedule. She's not able to be here, so Mary said, I was the newsletter publisher. Well, first of all, is um, Melinda here? No. Oh, they're oh, not now. She's on vacation. Oh, no. No. Well, then we're going to wait. We're going to wait with wait. that one. Yeah, we're yeah. Wait. Yeah. Wait for her. Okay. Um, so Pam would like to recognize Mary Stiebel with a Starfish Award. And Pam said, Mary went above and beyond at the county fair last week. She helped at the pumpkin decorating contest booth six days in a row, starting with a booth set up on Tuesday. She was there to receive pumpkin entries on Wednesday and Thursday. Then she actually judged pumpkins on Friday. And if you saw all the pumpkins, that's quite a job. Uh, she stayed to tie ribbons on the winners. Saturday morning, she arrived early to prepare for the contest award ceremony, helped me recognize the winners and give the prizes away. She was there to the end on Sunday, helping to take down the booth, box the decorations, give pumpkins back to their owner, all with a smile on her face and love in her heart. Anybody else? Would anybody, uh, Bill? Thank you, man. I have one. I'd like to see Jamie back up, please. Come on up, Jamie. Uh, Jamie is my administrator for the Lunch and Learn, okay? Um, he's always out here at the front desk. He's doing the registration, make sure everybody gets registered. He makes sure everybody gets all of the administrative literature and especially the raffle ticket. Everybody gets a raffle ticket. Believe it or not, they do. But I never have to worry about it. If I'm running late, I know Jamie is here. He's going upstairs getting snacks, water, getting all that orchestrated. When I had COVID, I called him and him and his wife jumped in and said, we can do that. Luckily, he didn't have to, but we'll test that out. But again, 
Thank you, Jamie. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, anyone else? All right, good. But move on real quick. Now I'd like to present the Master Gardener of the Season. Uh, this is the fall season. So this individual has been a member. Just a little bit about what she's done. Been a member since 2015. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, this year she's already put out over 300 hours. Uh, since 2015 has been over 2,500 hours. So amazing. Uh, pretty much has her hand in just about everything there is with the uh, Master Gardener program. Uh, she's uh, been highly involved in uh, some of the projects, mainly the socials, plant sales, fair, you name it. Her name's pretty much stamped on the Master Gardeners. Uh, served as a, this might help a little bit, served on the board as the president-elect, president and uh, past president. Uh, she uh, accounts for nearly 20% of our uh, plant sales uh, by doing it online. Uh, fantastic job. Uh, almost single-handedly takes on the t-shirt sales. Uh, this year has done roughly about $1,000. Uh, so what a great, uh, uh, great program there. Uh, Co-coordinator with the class. And I know that she's uh, answered hundreds of emails on the uh, directed to our uh, Guadalupe County Master Gardener email uh, about correspondence, uh, questions about gardening, and uh, so without further ado, I'd like to present the Master Gardener of the season to April Ripple. As y'all know, we're, we're accepting the two, 2024 membership dues. Uh, so please, uh, all that I ask here is real easy to do online. Uh, you don't have to pay the, um, uh, the, the service charge. So, so get that done. Don't wait until the last minute. So knock that out. Uh, treasurer report, Mark Mullen. All right, the uh, of <clears throat> September end of the month balances, uh, we have $32,259.10 in the checking account and $5,008.30 in the educational fund for $37,267.40. Uh, deposits, pretty pretty limited this month. We only got $1,546.20 to deposit and a few bills. <laughs> Oops, sorry. There you go. See it? All right. Uh, I don't, most of these bills are, are normal bills. We did renew the floral license for 2024, and, uh, which is $180. And Don't hear him. Yes. Okay. Barely. <laughs> <laughs> Is it okay? Just a second. 
Uh, we had an advertising cost uh, uh, for $251.99 for the new class. And I think all the others are reimbursements and class expenses. Any questions on the expenses? Any questions on any of the finances? That's it. Thank you. Good job. Education report, Mr. Bill. Okay, really quick. Um, this snapshot has some change months from last month, okay? Um, and we're at the crunch time where we're collecting dues, okay? So my point here is if you're having trouble getting hours in your BMS, don't sit there. Get a hold of us. Get a hold of me, get a hold of Denise, get anybody on the board of directors who's more than willing to help you get your hours in. And we know there are people that have done their hours. You just haven't logged them in. We need to get you to log them in, and we can help you do that. So keep that in mind. We're still there. We're, we're getting there. Um, this is new. Um, the AgriLife Center has changed their schedule. It's not January to December. Um, their reporting schedule is now at the end of September is their cutoff. The new year starts in November. So this is our education program summary. So this past year, from January to September, or September, we reached out to 500 people through our Lunch and Learn program, whether they be homeowners or gardeners, and uh, brought the classes to them right here in this classroom. So the learning results, and I, and I show you this based on 500 people, 90.5 um, increased their knowledge on spring gardening. That was a big one. Um, respondents to proper lawn care, we did lawn care and IPM, that was another big one, 80% of the crowd increased their awareness. Uh, the same way on the turf grass management and uh, rose pruning, that was another good one. And then application, almost the same, 96% said they were gonna to continue to do um, spring garden planting. I think the, the handouts we were getting out to everybody really helped we still have more of those to go. Um, again, Rose Care was a big one. We'll be back with that. Turf grass management, we're going to do that again. IPM strategies, we have two people in entomology class, myself and Beth. So we only have some of our own people doing entomology. Um, and then composting, we also have Peter. So those are really how we closed out. These are the totals that go up to um, the state. Um, extension office in um, Texas A&M so they can actually see how we're doing so we're really doing good our guest speaker this coming month will be Peter he will be doing uh, composting as well any comments questions good mark Yes. I got announcements for both, so there we go. Okay, so it was brought to our attention this week that we do not have a Christmas party committee. So if, if you think you already have that together, like, hey, I already have the committee, please let us know. But if you would like to volunteer also, please let us know. We need to get a space reserved. I know we want to have fun together for Christmas. And I, you know, this is my first year on the board, so I didn't even know when we needed the committee. So we need it now. Okay, the plant team co-lead. So I cannot do the plant sales all by myself this next year because I have business stuff that needs to be done during some of those weekends that we have plant sales. So I don't mind helping. I don't mind co-leading. I think it's fun. I got a lot of stuff already together. Or if you want to take the reins and go for it, by all means, that is good too. So the grow team will be separate from that though, because honestly, those are different things. Anyways, as far as you know, the plant sales, you're selling to people, you're having an event, you're setting it up. The grow team, currently at least, we are focusing on trying to grow plants for the gardens that we currently are volunteering for and supporting. So we do need both of those. 
And then let's see, oh, our Master Gardener class in January. Do not forget to tell everybody to sign up for that. We're only having one next year. So if they miss it, they miss it. So all of them are one in January. It's gonna be great. Oh, and we added Kingsbury Harvest Festival to the schedule. I know that we've done it in the past. We're doing it to try to get out the word, promote the class, number 39. I think we're gonna have like a photo booth that's like, imagine yourself as a master gardener, like with pitchforks and stuff and big hats and try to get them to stop and also talk to us and they can have fun and have our name by it. And we still need a volunteer director and a TCMG director alternate. So if you have any questions about those, we can answer them. Let's see here. Oh, and there it is all nice. This is who we currently have as our board nominees for this next year. President-elect, Beth Smith, Vice President, Wendy Salazar. Going through all of that, thank you everybody that has already said, hey, I'm good. Let's go through. Oh, and then we have, so the upcoming plant sales, we have the Pecan Fest in Seguin. We actually have two booths. We had, uh, they donated us an extra one. So we have two booths downtown. I emailed her today. Uh, it is from 10 till 4, and the setup will be before that, of course. So I need volunteers for that. We're going to be selling, if you have any plants that you have, that you have propagated, we can put them out for donations only. Please let me know, though, so that I can make sure I have enough space. We had a really great time with that. And the quad... Guadalupe, well that's an interesting name. <laughs> Guadalupe County Fair. It was pretty slow, at least on Saturday I was told that that was slower than normal, but we still had a very successful time. Our to total for our booth was $927.63. And 32 of those items were the garden decor. The uh, Master Gardener donated plants, I cannot talk tonight, I apologize, were a success. And, um, Actually, people donated more money than we would have charged in most cases, especially some of the moms that have kids that go to Texas A&M. They were like, oh, well, here's 50. So I only had one person put in some change and a couple of people go, well, thank you, and just walked off. But that's okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was fine. We had brassicas, the wholesale plants. We had 60 of those. We sold most of them at the event. And then our wonderful April So the rest at the front of her store. So thank you very much, April. And again, um, come see any of us on the board. You can also email me if you're interested in any of those volunteer positions. Thank you guys. Thank you. I am happy to report that we had the best fair we've ever had. Thanks to many great volunteers and thanks to some pretty incredible raffle prizes. Our, we, t we sold a total of 1,457 oh. raffle tickets <laughs> for a dollar amount of approximately $1,369. That's better than we've ever done. Wow. Ever. So wow. thank you to all who done. We had some all who donated and all who were at the fair. It is a definitely a team effort. And it is. It was appreciated. The numbers showed. Yes, Sarah was right. We were we were a little slow. We were thinking, what is going on? But I knew. I couldn't really tell what was going on until we got numbers. Well, we got the numbers and they were good. So it was good. Um, that's all I have for that. Just thank you to all the volunteers, the sponsors, people who donated. Oh, I don't, that wasn't me. I don't have that. That's Paul. Paul Introduce the master gardener that won the raffle prize? I don't think she's here. Her name is Kayla. I can't remember. She didn't have Kayla didn't come tonight? I don't think no. she did. Oh. So we raffled off a, I see your hand. We raffled off a, a class, uh, a, the master gardener class. A seat, class. A seat at the master gardener class. It was don the, the amount was donated by the Some, donor. I mean, Somebody donated the funds the to be able to do that. And so we were able to wrap Paul sold 101 <laughs> raffle tickets for that alone. And the young woman who won it is just ecstatic. Very she can always. Fun. She was going to try to be here. Is that the one that was helping at the booth? It wasn't the young woman that oh, was selling. Okay. Just no. Oh, okay. Just checking. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. 
other than to say we were surprised at the amount of donations raised by the booth for the free seats. $146. <laughs> because you know we have rows and thousands of packets of free seeds and one of our members, Kay Pilata, who's not here tonight, she said, well, why don't we just put a donation bucket by the seeds and just see what happens? So she did, and we got $146 for that. So it was just, it was a great year. So thank you wow. for everything. I'm going to switch gears again, like I always do. The food tonight was incredible. Thank you. Last month we had probably more volunteers than we've had sign out. However, tonight, there I believe there's only one on the list. So just keep that in mind. For next time, is that on the, on the table? I'll, I'll pass it around. I'll pass it around. Thank you. Any questions? Awesome job. I just want to piggyback on the county fair one more time. A, a special thank you to Kathleen, yes. Pam, and, and I know Sarah. I mean, Kathleen, this is, her, this is her baby. She does an awesome job every year. And like I said, they stole a little bit of my thunder. I know this has been the best, from my understanding, the highest amount that we've ever made in the raffles. Also, like I said, the donations. I have to give a shout out to three wonderful people who donated those plants. Uh, one was Laura Cunningham. The other was Joyce Friesenheim. Yeah. And then Melinda Lucas. So without those donated plants, we wouldn't have been able to do what we did. So, awesome job. Appreciate it. Uh, you saw the number up there, the $927. So out of that $927, 600, over 600 of that was for the donated plants. That is crazy. So, awesome job. And all that I have to say about the raffles, it must have been the people that were working there. You folks. You folks, because it must have been the energetic. Uh, and, and drawing them in, talking about the Master Gardener. So, shout out to all of you. Great job. So, moving right along, uh, Diana Hart, volunteer. Do you have any? I don't have a lot left to say, except there are still many opportunities since you're all rested up from the fair. <laughs> For, to get more volunteer hours. And so, like Sarah said, Pecan Fest is October the 28th, Saturday of next week. And Sarah is the contact person there. Kingsbury Fall Festival is Saturday, November the 11th. Sarah is also the contact person for that one. And then Yule Fest on De Sunday, December the 3rd. And you can talk to April about Yule Fest. So there's opportunities to get more out volunteer hours and plus all our gardens and projects and things like that too but again thank you for all volunteering as much as you have and just keep up the good work awesome thank you diana <laughs> see what i meant about a stamp on everything <laughs> april yule fest so everything points back to april great job Oh, oh just uh, more so class 38 update we have this Where's Karen? Right. Oh, there. Yes. She's hiding in class. <laughs> All right. Yeah, six foot tall person <laughs> hiding is not always good. <laughs> I'm Karen, Karen Burkich. I'm um, part of class 38. Um, as I said last month, we are small, but we are mighty. Um, yes. We have two, um, two of our members have already reached their 50 hours and oh. then some. So we're pretty proud of them. That's kind of a cool thing. Um, we had, so we have four classes left, which um, is a, a bittersweet because we're definitely going to miss doing that on Thursdays and, and seeing everybody. But we had, um, we had our, our education tours at the Big Red Barn, which was an education not only for the kiddos, but it was definitely an education for some of us that don't have kiddos at home anymore. Um, I'm one of those, and it was definitely interesting. Um, just kind of give you a little tidbit on my piece in that. So I go to the I go to the big red barn. I'm like, yes, kids, awesome. This will be fun. Get there, and first I, you know, we learn about Vanessa, the cow and all of that and watch the kids eyes open up to see the cow being milked and 
they applauded the milk coming into the <laughs> Amazing. And then they came out to the garden center, and I, w I personally was kind of amazed at how many kids didn't realize where food comes from. Um, um, it, it was just, it was an eye opener to what needs to be out there. So uh, something to remember when we're at the fair and when we're, you know, out in the public eye to kind of share things with kids and get down to their level and, and do that. But, and then the second time I went out there, it was homeschoolers. So we had anywhere from fourth graders up to teenage kids. And it was really interesting to watch them as well and what they've seen in the past at the Big Red Barn, and now they're showing their siblings and, and the younger generation. So that was a, a great experience um, beyond. And then, doing the fair, I was never involved in FFA. Um, my daughter took sports on instead of doing the whole animal thing. And so um, it was really interesting for me to see those people come in and talk to them about the seeds that they were getting ready to plant, making sure that they read the labels on the back of the seeds to show them how long the germination is. Um, it was an education for myself as well as being able to teach. And we all know that when we teach others, we're continuing to learn also. So it's kind of a great opportunity. Um, and the fair was just, Wild. I mean, we got to watch, well, I was there on Friday, so we got to watch the Queen Bean. Oh. All that. All that. Tearing. Go on on stage. <laughs> um, on that note, I, I really want to thank the artists for the fairy doors. I was incredibly uh, amazing. Um, we got to talk about fairy doors all day long. It was, it was so much fun. And you know how you need a fairy in your garden, and then I'd tell my squash story because this year my fairies decided they needed them as dining room table decorations. So the minute a flower would come up, it was gone. So, uh, but it was but it was really exciting, and those they were just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, but like I said, it's a bittersweet that that class of '38 has only four more classes left. Today, Bill, thank you because he went over. Um, a grow box and the irrigation and our brains were on overload by the time he got done with class today. Um, and that's kind of how I leave every Thursday. And April and Paul and Tim, thank you for your time. Um, it definitely is appreciated more than you know. So. Class of 38! <laughs>
given your number to okay. up there? I'll give it to you, but it's on the MS if you forget it. It's mm -hmm. 210. Anybody write me down? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're up in the you're up in the office every yeah. uh, upstairs every Wednesday. Is that right? Yeah, and, and I'm there every Wednesday, one to three. Okay, you just show up. Yeah, come see her. Okay. What's the name for right here? Yeah. Write it down. What's her name? Anybody? Ernestine. 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 Not Ernestine. Ernestine. <laughs> it's only Ernestine. <laughs> Okay, and there's one more person that just got us. It's Carol, this, she's one of my favorite master gardeners. I love her so much. She's going to tell a little bit about the Veterans Garden. I got an invitation today that they are building us some benches. Wow. They're going to be in there. They're going to be concreted in. They're also making us some tables. They will also be concreted in. Um, we also have our irrigation system going. So we have water going. We don't have to drag the hose of that where it's well, the trees. That's the only thing we have to drag from through. But if anybody would like to get, get volunteer hours, we're there Monday morning from 8.30 to about 11, and Fridays again from 8.30 to about 10. It's a beautiful park. Mm -hmm. Okay. And November 11th is the big Veterans Day. Yeah, right, but it's a, a get together there. So if you're a veteran, you know somebody's a veteran, come on up and join us. What time? Do you know the time? Uh, I think it's 7.30. 7 okay. um, I've got a slide up there that just tells you some of the upcoming meetings that we're going to have in the next few months. Um, uh, next month we'll have a pretty serious meeting about the dark sky, um, protecting our dark sky. Uh, Cindy Lugong Cassidy is um, with the Dark Sky of Texas. Um, she's kind of a big wig in that organization and she's uh, got a great presentation for us. Um, uh, in, we're going to have Jerry McNulty back and you new folks, if you've never heard Jerry talk, you're going to be really thrilled and those of us that have been waiting for him to come back. Uh, we're going to get that thrill in January. And then uh, I had Judith Green come and talk about bats um, in, I think it was February of this year. She's coming back in February of next year to talk about hummingbirds and butterfly habitat. And then um, Jay White in March, is uh, he's the owner and the publisher of Texas Gardener Magazine that I've been taking for five years. And he's going to talk about... Um, oh, pests, taking care of pests organically. So a lot of good um, uh, meetings coming up over the next few months. So just mark your calendars and plan to be here. Um, tonight we are having um, scary and very spooky witches talking to us tonight. Uh, they are from the Guadalupe uh, Master Naturalists. Um, I know some of them from the Native Plant Society too. Um, and uh, I don't want you to faint or be afraid when you see them, but um, come on girls, let me introduce you. We, oh, oh be afraid, be afraid. <laughs> Nancy Masterson. Chris Dias and, and, and Kate Schnauz. <laughs> And I'll turn it over to them. Let's see. I, I almost double, want to call. Double, 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 and We are and happy Halloween. We are not naturalist by day, but tonight we are witches. <laughs> Would you like a microphone? I think we're good? Let me ask the people in the back row. <laughs> All right. I'll turn on my hair again. We will. You are gardeners. You are surrounded by the green things that live all around you. They're in your garden beds. They're in your fence lines. They're in the wild and natural places that you may visit. So we will take you back in time, back 
tens of thousands of years ago, before those pesky Europeans stumbled upon our wide and warm land. We will take you back to when we lived in balance with the natural world, when we shared with our furred and feathered and thinned ones to have everything we needed for medicines, for poisons, for colors, for touches, and for smells. So tonight, we will, oh, it would be uh, irreverent of us to share with you or even try to teach you in the mere hour that we have tonight, teach you how to cast the magic spells that we will discuss tonight. That would be for another day. So today, we will show you the things that grow all around you that have magical qualities. Miss Chris. He start quiet. Look at this The unique meals are easily overlooked. Chris, I'm going to give you the microphone. Now you don't have to scream. So I'll start again. We start with quiet secretive spells. The unique feel of these five plants is are easily overlooked. That makes them all the better for hiding spells in. Who would think anything strange about children playing with us? 